Okay, we're back uh, after a bit of a costume change. So, basically there's a lot of detail on this page that's not too important. What it boils down to is that when you use the tangent to approximate a function, um, and you go from x0 to x0 plus h, the big story for us is that the error in that approximation is a multiple of h squared, it's order h squared. And what we see now, we can analyze specific things, but actually that's not re what really what we're going to do. It's this kind of a thing. Halving the step size will reduce the error by a factor of four. Because if you, and we'll, we'll see this in uh, examples, but basically, say, um, initially, say your step size is uh, a half, so your error is going to be a multiple of a quarter. It's going to be a multiple of a half squared which is a quarter. And then if you change the step size from a half to a quarter, in other words, you half the step size, then the error is going to be a multiple of a quarter squared, which is a multiple of 1 16th. So you've gone from a multiple of a quarter to a multiple of 1 16th. And of course, uh, that means that it's um, a quarter the size. So half the step size will reduce the error by a factor of four. Now, one thing we might clarify this error is this local error over uh, just a single um, over a single step. We'll talk about multiple steps in a moment. So this error is called local error. Okay. Now, at the bottom there, uh, it's looking at a specific example, but I'm not too interested in it really. Error, actually, we'll do it anyway. So consider a differential equation given by this. So you're looking for a function whose derivative is 6x plus 5 at x equals 0, the y coordinate is minus 2. You can show that this is the solution. And what we can do is remember, well, the, we can calculate the second derivative from the differential equation because we had that the first derivative is basically that's given by the differential equation is 6x plus 5. And differentiate both sides of this, you get that the second derivative is equal to 6. And so what you have is, if you want to, so here you've got the exact value at x1, which is the next point over, is equal to the previous value plus the step size plus the slope plus an error term. The error is the difference between the tangent and the actual curve, and that is an order h squared, and in fact it's, uh, well, we can write down the exact error here, you see, because the second derivative is a constant 6. So the error here is equal to um, some value of the second derivative that's a, a Greek thing times h squared. And now in this case the second derivative is always equal to 6. This would be 6 over 2 is equal to 3 h squared. And now usually you can't analyze it to this degree. Like here the specific constant is 3. Uh, but usually we'll be talking about just a multiple of h squared. So for example here if you do h equal to 1 you get an error of 3. And if you go h equal to a half you get 3 by a half squared, 3 by a quarter, you get 3 quarters. The error has gone from 3 down to 3 quarters. Halving the error reduces, excuse me, halving the step size reduces the local error uh, by a factor of 4. And reducing the step size to 1 tenth. Reducing the step size to, um, by a factor of 10, reduces it by a factor of 100. Sorry, there was just someone getting there. Okay. So, as I said, this is just measuring the error for a single step. In applications, we've got loads of steps. So, what we have to understand is that, um, okay, you pick up an error at every step, but you've got loads of steps. So, you're adding up loads of local errors to get what's called a global error. Now, um, we can do this roughly with uh, a logical error, or we can do it properly. So, what I'm going to restrict to is, I'm going to, if we make uh, the following assumption, what I do here uh, makes sense. So suppose that the derivative 
just depends on x. Now I won't get into the technicalities of why what I'm doing doesn't work when the derivative depends on y as well. Uh, uh, okay, right. So what we're going to say is that global error now. So this is the error at the very end. So you've got loads of steps. And each time you're using a tangent to approximate the curve. And each time there's a little bit of more error being built up. And these little extra bits of error are called um, load, the load errors. And what we're going to say is that the absolute value of the global uh, um, error, so that's the error at the very, very end, is the same as the sum of the local errors. So I'm going to call this maybe um, the first local error plus the second local error plus the third local error plus dot, 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 the nth local error. So what I'm saying here is that there are n steps if you add up all the local errors, you get the global error. And I'm going to work in the sense of absolute value. And there's something called the triangle inequality, which says that you can say that if you've got a sum, uh, an absolute value of a sum, it's going to be less than or equal to the sum of the absolute values. And now what we have from above, this actually should be the absolute value. We know that all these local errors, ultimately, the big story, I'm not so concerned about the second derivative and the two. What I'm concerned with is that they're a multiple of h squared. So all of these are less than a multiple of h squared. So this is where you're using the order language. So Let's say this is some multiple k1 of h squared plus some multiple k2 of h squared plus dot 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 some multiple kn of h squared. This particular calculation, this argument that we're doing, what we're going to show, by the way, is that while the local errors are order h squared, the global errors are order h. So that means that it seems really good, you know, reduce the step size by a factor of 10 that reduces the local error by a factor of 100, that's great, but it turns out that for the global error, you don't get such improvements, that making the local errors all a little bit really, really better, uh, you still got loads of them, so it doesn't quite uh, carry true. We're gonna show that the global error is order h, and that means that if you wanna half the global error, you have to half the step size. And that, uh, the thing, of course, then is you've got twice the number of calculations. That's the issue, that's the trade-off. So now what we're going to do is we're going to say, OK, let k star be the biggest of these k's. So I'm going to say max. Now this is a, an argument that we're going to do for different methods. So at some stage or other, you're going to want to understand this. Learning it off is a waste of time. So this is less than or equal to. So K1 is some constant, it's less than K star because K star is the biggest of these. So this is K star h squared plus K star h squared plus K star h squared plus dot 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 plus, I've uh, done too many of them now, but it doesn't really matter. K star h squared. And there are one, two, three, four, five, six, nine of these. So this is nine, sorry, nine, n. One, two, three, oh, n, nine of them, ah, n of them. So it's n times k star times h squared. Now, the bit I'm possibly missing is the global error. So the global error isn't you know, for all different possible values. It'll be over a finite range. So the example we were looking at earlier, we're interested in x between 0 and 4. And that value, the difference between 0 and 4 is called the range. So what am I going to do now? Um, I'm going to say, okay, 
I'm going to say, and in, in the question, this is probably an exam question. We will do this again, so we'll see it. Okay, so suppose um, the difference between the final x value, so in the example that was 4, and the initial x value, um, in the example that was 0, we'll call it, uh, let's say, big L. So L is the total range of values that you're approximating the solution of the differential equation over. And what you're doing is you're, you're chopping that up into loads of little pieces, and you're saying there's n of them, and they've all got a width of h, so this L is equal to nh. And looking at this little equation here, you can find that the n is equal to L divided by h, if you divide both sides by h. So this n here is equal to L divided by h. And then what we have is that the global error, or rather the absolute value of the global error, is less than or equal to n, which is L divided by h, times k star times h squared. And what you have is h squared divided by h um, is equal to h. So we end up with L k star h. And look at this. You have that the global error is less than a multiple of h. So the global error is of order of h. So I'll write something. Uh, let's say, the, therefore, the global error is of order h, which I could write as this funny big O h. OK. Now, you might be still misunderstanding or not understanding what is the difference between the local error and the global error. So that's what this table is going to do for us. OK. So here's an extent of values 0 to 5. So for example, in this example, the L is 5. And we've got exact values here for y, 0, 1, 4, 9, 16, 25. And what we want to do is approximate those. Now, this isn't actually using Euler's method. But anyway, um, suppose, so at the start of course, you the answer exactly right. At this point, it's slightly over. This time, it's slightly under, over, under, over. And look at, at each stage. The easy thing is to look at the difference between these two. And as that kind of gets bigger, the difference between these at the end, that's the global error. Uh, but you can imagine kind of a, a moving global error if you add up all the local errors to that point. So initially, there's no global error. After one step, uh, the global error is 0.2. You're 0.2 bigger, plus. Then at the next one, you're minus 0.4 over. Then you're 0.5 over. Then you're minus 0.8, uh, I can say 0.8 under. And at the end, you're 1.2 under. Really, this is the global error. And then the local errors are how much error did you pick up in between. So on the first one, you went 0.2 over. Now you've gone from 0.2 over to 0.4 under. So the error is minus 0.6 here. So in other words, at, at this point, you, there was a difference of 0.2 between them. And on the next one, the exact answer got bigger and the uh, approximation got smaller and basically the idea is that if if this was exactly correct that this would have gone down 0.6 kind of relative to what it was something like this so imagine if the approximation was correct here well then that means that this is one and that's going to two point that's uh, going to three points uh, we'll go to 3.4 well the exact solution is going to four you'd have an error now of minus 0.6 and similar story here, this goes from 0.6 under, or 0.4 under, 0.5 over, so that's a local error uh, plus 0.9. And similar story here, we're, we're 0.9 over, we end up 0.8 under, so that's a, an error of, uh, uh, I think this figure is, is this wrong? No, it's okay. Because we're a half over, and we go to 0.8 under, so that's uh, minus 1.3. So you add up all of these uh, local errors, uh, add up these, and you'll get the same as this. So the global error is adding up the local errors. The local error is how wrong you go from step to step. 
So hopefully we can uh, have a little look at an example. Um, and maybe if we can do this or start this, we'll certainly have enough to be able to do uh, the labs. Now, I said it's very important to understand the Euler method, and that's true, but we will be doing it a lot. So if you don't get it on the first run, hopefully you'll get it on the second run. Okay, so we've got a differential equation here. It's an abstract one. Use Euler's method with step size of 0.2 to estimate the y value of 1.6, uh, where y of x is the solution of this. Okay, it says you, you can use a table, and of course in Excel it's going to be very, very natural that you use a table, but it's not completely necessary. I have a table down here. Uh, first of all, we need to get it in the correct form, which is the derivative in terms of other things. So if I add the x to both sides and take away the xy here, I get that the derivative y dash of x is equal to x minus x times y. Now this y of x is not y times x. This is the y value at x, so this is just y. So this is where we are here. And now what we're using is Euler's method says the next y value is the previous y value plus the stem size times the previous slope. So Euler's method says the next y value is the previous y value plus the step size times the previous slope. Okay, so y1, the next y value. Now what we're doing here is we're starting at the point x equal to 1, y equal to 0. x equal to 1, y equal to 0. And so the previous y value, so we're trying to estimate what's going on at 1.2, previous y value is zero. This is easy once you get used to this. This bit is not complicated. So it's the previous y value is zero, plus the step size is 0 0.2 times the previous slope. Now the slope is the derivative, and we're going to calculate x minus xy at the previous point. At the previous point, the x is 1, so you've got 1 minus 1 times, and the previous y is 0. So you end up here at which 0 plus 0.2 times 1, this is 0 0.2. And that's in the table below. So we've gone from x equal to 1, and we've jumped with a step size of 0.2. So the step is in the x, and then the Euler method cal uh, calculates the corresponding y's. Okay. So at x equal to 1.2, we've gone one step along, we've got 0 0.2. Now what does this do? This approximates the true value at 1.2. There will be an error. Okay, let's calculate the next one. The next y value is the previous y value. Now the previous y value is now 0 0.2 plus the step size, which isn't the x value, well there's no confusion with that here, it's just 0 0.2 times the previous slope. So we need to calculate x minus xy at the previous point. So the previous x is 1.2 minus 1.2 times the previous y, which is 0 0.2. Now, uh, of course, we'd have to go into the calculator, but I have the table below. This turns out to be equal to 0 0.392. And this approximates the true solution at 1.4. And we'll do one more, because the question is asking us to estimate what's happening at 1.6. Now we might have space to draw something here, possibly not time. And there we'll be, yeah, we'll get the important thing in here. So really what we're doing is we've got x values between 1 and 1.6. And we're going to use a step size of 0.2. So we're going to figure out what's happening at 1.2. And then use that to find out what's happening at 1.4. And then use that to find out what's happening at 1.6. Now I've got 30 seconds left on the tape, so hopefully I can finish this off. So the next y value is the previous y value, which is 0.392, plus the step size times the previous slope. And the slope is the x-coordinate minus the x-coordinate times y. Previous x and y are here, so previous x is 1.4, minus previous x is 1.4, times previous y is 0.392. Uh, basically no time left over, this is equal to 0.56224.